We start with a point. Hi, everybody. Time for another edition of the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. My name is Rob Bryanton. Last time the topic was our universe within the omniverse. This time it's our universe as a dodecahedron. Let's talk about the shape of our own universe. The image we're looking at here is of a rotating dodecahedron from Wikipedia. This unique platonic solid incorporates the golden ratio, which is often denoted by the Greek letter phi, usually in lowercase. <laughs> That's what it looks like there. When you stack a number of dodecahedra together, interesting things happen with the way the different faces and vertices rotate. They can be seen to unfold one into another, and the resulting hints of rotating helix shapes, fractals, and the spirals found in nature link not just to the broad field of sacred geometry, but to cosmological theories about the structure of our universe. Now I want to show you some mind-blowing visualizations from uh, something that you can download yourself if you go to geometrygames.org. It's called Curved Spaces. In entries like Pole 49 and Pole 58, we've talked about how our universe is not really flat and infinite, but rather slightly curved, making it finite but unbounded. In entries like an expanding 4D sphere and when's a knot, not a knot, we've also talked about the now proven Poincaré conjecture. Curved spaces includes the Poincaré dodecahedral space mode, which is what we're looking at here which lets you fly through the stacked dodecahedra that would form the surface of the 4D hypersphere our finite but unbounded universe resides within. And by putting a planet Earth at the center of each dodecahedron, this fly-through gives us one way of visualizing how Everett's many worlds could be defined by our observation of the universe as a series of Planck frames, one after another, each frame separated but connected to other possible adjacent frames, another favorite topic of this project. In older entries uh, that I'll put up links for, like Everything and Seeing Eye to Eye, we've touched on the amazing ideas of Dan Winter, who continues to present an ever-growing body of work. As I've said before, Dan's web pages can seem overwhelming, but there's no denying his passionate pursuit of his ideas. The animated images we're showing here now come from Dan's gigantic Golden Proof web page, which you'll see does include lots of graphics, animations, and movie clips if you scroll further down that page. The first two animations I've grabbed from Dan's website show the basic idea, which Dan describes this way. These visuals are graphed from my original equation of golden ratio on the correct conic dodecastellation of how hydrogen radii nest, embed into the Planck length, field coupling to make gravity, using the golden ratio, successful wave adding and multiplying, which is non-destructive compression. As you know, the different electron shells of an atom are discrete. When an electron moves from one level to another, it doesn't travel through the intermediate space. It simply pops from one to the other, in a manner very similar to the Flatlander Anton Afolda newspaper concept we showed in the original 10th dimension animation. This is yet another example of how our reality, which seems continuous, is actually divided into tiny little steps or frames that are each one Planck unit apart from the next, not just in space, but in space-time as well. Dan quotes from The Golden Ratio, Ionic and Atomic Radii and Bond Lengths, a paper by Raji Hayrovska, written in collaboration with Jay Hayrovsky of the Institute of Physical Chemistry, Academy of Sciences of the Czech Republic, Prague. The summary of the paper includes the following text. This work arose from the author's finding that the ratio of the radius of hydrogen, estimated recently by C. H. Cires and N. Koga, by density functional methods to the ground state Bohr radius is the golden ratio, which operates in a variety of natural phenomena. It is found that the golden ratio indeed plays a quantitative role in atomic physics. Dan cites the above as confirmation of his own ideas about how important the golden ratio is to our fractal, enfolded reality. For me, this all ties back into the idea that our observed universe is being constructed one Planck frame at a time by constructive interference occurring in the fifth dimension, which, as I've been saying from the outset of this project, is where our now is actually being observed from instant to instant, as it's chosen from a probability space of possible pasts and futures. Let's look at one more interesting thing about a dodecahedron. It can be constructed from five pyramids. And uh, this is the image that uh, shows that right now. 
A tetrahedron is a four-sided pyramid with each triangular face the same size. First of all, we're looking at an image of five interlocking tetrahedra. Each one is color-coded so it's easier to tell them apart. And these have been rotated to make all of their outer points equidistant from each other. As you can see in the image we're putting up now, these points can be joined by pentagons. And when we do so, our old friend the dodecahedron emerges once again. What's the point? We'll continue this discussion next time with our universe as a point. My name's Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.